and welcome back and a happy new year 2022. Yes, I know that's going to sound odd, isn't it, if you're watching this in August 2024. Anyway, I thought perhaps we'd uh, introduce the year with a quick quiz. You think you know Arduino stuff? Well, now's the time to go and get a pencil and a bit of paper or pad or something because I'm going to have some quick fire questions and just see how much you really know about the Arduino. And we won't cover the other processors because they're a little bit more niche. But if you're going to start with the Arduino, there are some few things you really ought to know if you're using it. So if you didn't know them, you'll learn something. But let's see how many of you get 100%. Are you ready? Get your pen and paper. Pause the video. Come on, pause the video. Get your pen and paper. And uh, we'll listen from our sponsor first while you're doing all that. If making a PCB is a bit of a puzzle to you, let JLC PCB help you put all the pieces in the right place. Easy EDA is an intuitive electronic design tool, just as I'm showing you here. And when you've done that, you can convert it into a PCB like this one here. And you can view it in 3D and see exactly how it's going to look before you order it. It's easy to order from JLC PCB directly from within Easy EDA, with fast, reliable deliveries and now $2 for five pieces, including aluminium boards. They can even assemble them for you at no extra charge. Why don't you see what the JLC PCB can offer you today? Question one, can you identify that board on my workbench right now? Easy one, just to make sure that nobody goes home with null point. Here we have a much smaller board, not made by Arduino, it's a clone. What's it called? Here we have another board. It's an Arduino Nano, not made by Arduino themselves. What's the fundamental difference between this board and the one behind it, the original Arduino Uno? Fundamental difference. Back to the Arduino Uno then. What's the maximum size sketch when it's been compiled can you put into that chip? Next question. What is that chip on the Arduino Uno? For a bonus point, Tell me what the chip was they used prior to this one. OK, so the Arduino Uno has got lots of GPIO pins. You can see them all around here. Yes. How many GPIO pins has the Arduino Uno got? Next question. How many hardware interrupt pins has the Arduino Uno got? That is to say, they are pins that when brought either high or low, depending on what you've specified in your sketch, will make something happen inside the chip. How many hardware interrupt pins? An easy one now. How fast is the clock usually on an Arduino Uno? And for a bonus point, what's the lowest clock speed it can run at? Next question. Most people program the Arduino Unos via the USB port. OK, this is a, a big, chunky USB port. Normally these days there are either minis or micros. But what would you do if the USB port was in some way damaged and you couldn't use it? How would you program this Arduino Uno? I previously asked you how big a sketch you could get onto this board when it's been compiled. But how much runtime memory does that chip have? Next question on GPIO ports again. What is the maximum voltage you can apply to any one of the GPIO pins on this board? Maximum voltage. Question about the analog input pins down here. If you left all the defaults as they should be, what range would the Arduino give you back when you measure something on one of these ports? Zero volts to five volts, what do you read in the analog read statement. Next question on GPIO ports. You're driving something from one of these GPIOs. What's the maximum current you are allowed to take from the GPIO pin? For a bonus point, what is the recommended maximum current you take from a GPIO pin? More general questions then. First one, how many timers does the Arduino Uno have? Which timer does the millis function get associated with? Here we have an add-on board for the Arduino. It has these long pins running through it, so we can plug it directly into the pin headers on the Arduino itself. What are these add-on boards normally known as? When we program the Arduino using the Arduino IDE, what language do we use? 
Finally, we have this very small board here, manufactured by Arduino themselves. Can you identify it for five bonus points? Okay, time to get a cup of tea and see how we all did. Right, let's whiz through the question, shall we? First of all, yes, this is, of course, an Arduino Uno because it says so on the front. But I'm not going to give you the point unless you said it's an R3 because the R2 and the R1 were quite different, really. If you look on the back of this one, in very small writing at the top there, board model, Uno R3. Mm. Could you identify this board? Because it does say on it, after all, this is an Arduino Nano. Yes. However, that was easy enough. But what's the fundamental difference between this and a full-size Arduino Uno? Size. That is the fundamental difference. If you're going, hang on a minute, there must be something different between that little board and that big board. Well, no, it's the size that matters in this case. Yes, everything this big board can do, this little one can as well. Identical. So, if this is a Nano, what's this little one here? Yeah, that's a Nano as well. They're different, just different clones, basically. Right, different factories, different PCB colours, but they're both Arduino Nanos, and they can do everything that that big board can do. Same memory, same runtime memory, same USB interface, except, of course, it's a little socket, which makes it a lot easier. So, the maximum size sketch you can put into that chip is 32K. Well, sort of. If you've got a bootloader on that chip, which is a little tiny program that runs and lets you put, uh, upload programs into it, then you're going to use at least 0.5K, sometimes up to 2K for that mini program. So it's 32K minus whatever that bootloader size is. That chip, for the next question, is an AT Mega 328P. Uh, what was the chip before that? AT Mega 8. Much less powerful. And in fact, the, the tiny little chip there you see up next to the USB socket um, is these days more powerful than the chip that used to run the whole Uno board. Amazing, yes? Now, the next question was, how many GPIO pins has the Arduino Uno actually got? And this was a bit of a trick question for you. Because, yes, you can see on the actual unit there that it starts at zero here and goes all the way up to 13, which makes 14 pins in total. So if you answered 14, well, I'll give you one point. But uh, what about all these pins down here that are marked as analog, but that's just aid beginners for the identification. They're analog capable GPIO pins. You can use these pins as standard GPIO pins, no problem at all. And they are numbered from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Hardware interrupt pins. Yes, on the Arduino Uno, we've only actually got two, and they are pins two and three. They're the only ones you can use for hardware interrupts. That's not a, a pin change interrupt. This is a hardware interrupt, like you'd use, say, for a rotary encoder. Next question about clock speed. By default, out the box, it runs at 16 megahertz. Now, the chip itself is capable of running at 20 megahertz. So you might be asking, why did Arduino then downgrade the chip, as it were? And it's all to do with timing. Well, for a start, the old Arduino used to run at 8 megahertz. The bootloader expects it to be 16 megahertz for the speed. And uh, there's probably a couple of other things like millis. Now, the lowest speed you can run this chip normally at is 1 megahertz. And you can reduce the voltage at which it will run at that point as well. But for full 16 megahertz, you need 5 volts. Next question was how you might program this device if the USB port was in some way damaged. Either the port was damaged or you've blown up the 80 mega chip here, which uh, interfaces with it. How else can you upload it? Well, you can upload a sketch by using the ICSP port. These six pins here, well, two of them are power, so it's actually four. And these are effectively the SPI pins. If you've never done it, you really should look into it because I run a lot of my programs on the chip via uploaded via the ICSP, which means you do not need a bootloader. Great. 
So I asked about runtime memory, that is a sort of a scratch pad area that the, the chip uses to put all your variables in and to add things up and take away and read GPIO pins. How much memory has it got to do all that? And the answer is on this chip and this board, it's 2048 bytes, two kilobytes. Now, maximum GPIO voltage on any one of these pins here and here. Normally, I'll give you a point if you said five volts, but the data sheet answer is 5.5 volts, absolute maximum. I gave you a programming question next about the range you'd read in, on the analog in ports here, A0 to A5, and indeed A6, A7 if you've got them on your particular board. Uh, well, naught volts means you read analog read as naught, but because it's a 10-bit interface, in 10 bits the maximum number you can hold is 1023. But remember, 0 is a value as well. So the range is 0 to 1023 at 5 volts, which is 1024 individual values. Hmm. Yeah, I know I'm being picky again. All right, I'll be, I'll be more lenient on the next question. OK, GPIO pin current maximum, I asked. What's the maximum current you can take from any one of these pins when you're driving something like an LED or, or relay or something like that? Well, according to the data sheet, the maximum current you can take is 40 milliamps. 40. However, there's a maximum current overall that you can take on the chip, and it's quite low, something like 200 milliamps. So taking 40 from any one of those pins really does reduce your options. As a general rule, we say we'd like to, to keep to the maximum of 20 milliamps per pin, because then you can have lots of pins, well, up to 10 of them, all taking 20 milliamps without overloading the chip as a whole. I then asked you a question about the internal hardware. How many timers does the Arduino Uno chip have? Well, the AT Mega 328P has three timers. They're known as timer 0, timer 1, and timer 2. And moving swiftly on to the next question, which timer is associated with a millis function that is triggered every millisecond, and it is timer zero, which is why you shouldn't really fiddle about with timer zero, because your millis will go completely wrong, and who knows what you'll end up with as part of your delay statements. On to more hardware questions. These add-on boards with the long pin headers on them that allow them to be plugged directly into the Arduino without any further cables, they're known as shields. And in the Raspberry Pi world, just in case you get confused, they're known as hats. Next question, I asked what programming language we use. Well, believe it or not, we use C++. No, not C. C++, because the language we use is indeed object-oriented. Yes, we can have objects. Doesn't matter if you know what they are or not. Guaranteed, the code behind your code, all the libraries and the stuff that Arduino themselves have written, will be very much object-oriented. Right, so it's C++. And yes, I know we can use assembler, but I mean, I did it once, twice, didn't I, in a couple of my videos, but mm, yeah, no, it's C++. So for five bonus points, did you manage to identify this board? I mean, the name is on the actual board itself. And as you can see, if I turn it around, you can see there it says Uno Mini. Yes, this is a special edition board just released by Arduino. Uh, to celebrate the nth millionth Arduino Uno to be sold. And this is identical to that board at the back in terms of functionality. But, of course, it's a quarter of the size. Um, and they're not cheap. They're sort of a, a limited edition numbered uh, sequence. And they've got a USB-C socket on the front to bring them all nicely up to date. But that basically is an Arduino Uno Mini but not in the sense of an Arduino Mini. This is an Arduino Uno Mini. Very different. And yes, this is absolutely a genuine product. So how many did you get right? On the screen there, you see the maximum points you could have got. Uh, I know I was a bit harsh on some of them, only giving you one point for a part answer, but we've got to be strict, haven't we? Yeah. And if you didn't know the answer to some of this, well, you've learned something. New year, new information, great. Now, comments down below if you want to, if there's things you would like me to cover in future videos. I've already got a, an audio Bluetooth module video lined up.
which I've integrated into my ESP32 web radio. Sounds great. We'll be covering that sometime in the future. Uh, in the meantime, though, Happy New Year and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.